Senator I think that's Vance, the question. I'm going to ask you again, did Donald Trump lose the 2020 election? And I've answered election? your question with another question. You answer my question and I'll answer yours. J.D. Vance sat down with the New York Times where he would not answer a simple question, showcasing how untrustworthy this man is. So I'm going to get to this clip, which is really wild because it is one of the few times you actually see a journalist ask a question, the same question over and over and over again. Usually they feel like they have to move on. In this case, the journalist here is not moving on. And yet J.D. Vance continues to avoid answering the question, which makes him just look completely ridiculous. But after I play this, I'm also going to get to some recent polling out of uh, CNN and their coverage of this, showing the race tightening a little bit in the past month. And something very clear happened about a month ago that I believe led to this. So I'll get to more on that. But first, here is the J.D. Vance clip. In the debate, you were asked to clarify if you believe Trump lost the 2020 election. Do you believe he lost the 2020 election? I think that Donald Trump and I have both raised a number of issues with the 2020 election, but we're focused on the future. I think there's an obsession here with focusing on 2020. I'm much more worried about what happened after 2020, which is a wide open border, groceries that are unaffordable. And look- Senator, ooh, yes ooh. or no? Okay. Did Donald Trump lose the 2020 election? Well, let me ask you a question. Is it okay that big technology companies censored the Hunter Biden laptop story, which independent analysis have said cost Donald Trump millions of votes. Senator Vance, I'm going to ask you again, did Donald Trump lose the 2020 election? Did big technology companies censor a story that independent studies have suggested would have cost Trump millions of votes? Senator I think that's Vance, the question. I'm going to ask you again, did Donald Trump lose the 2020 election? And I've answered election? your question with another question. You answer my question and I'll answer yours. I have asked this question repeatedly. It is something that is very important for the American people to know. There is no proof, legal or otherwise, that Donald Trump did not lose the 2020 you're, election. You're repeating a slogan rather than engaging with what I'm saying, which is that when our own technology firms engage in industrial scale censorship, by the way, backed up by the federal government in a way that independent studies suggest affect the votes, I'm worried about Americans who feel like there were problems in 2020. I'm not worried about this slogan that people throw. Well, every court case went this way. I'm talking about something very discreet, a problem of censorship in this country that I do think affected things in 2020, and more importantly, that led to Kamala Harris's governance, which has screwed this country up in a big way. Senator, would you have certified the election in 2020? Yes or no? I've said that I would have voted against certification because of the concern that I just raised. I think that when you have technology companies- The answer is no. When you have technology companies censoring Americans at a mass scale in a way that, again, independent studies have suggested affect the vote, I think that it's right to protest against that, to criticize that, and that's a totally reasonable thing. So the answer is no. And the last question, will you support the election results this time and commit to a peaceful transfer of power? Well, first of all, of course we commit to a peaceful transfer of power. We are gonna have a peaceful transfer of power. Uh, I, of course, believe that peaceful transfer of power is gonna make Donald Trump the next president of the United States. But if there are problems, of course, in the same way that Democrats protested in 2004 and Donald Trump raised issues in 2020, we're going to make sure that this election counts all right, how about that load of BS? So, so many things there. He's still not acknowledging that Trump lost the election in 2020. He is blaming technology. Let me get to the uh, social media part of this, which is, it's so wild that he is claiming this when everything that happened just recently with him on Twitter, but, and Elon Musk and his support of Trump, but I'll get to that in a second. Going on to say here, that if there are problems, well, we're going to look into those. He's essentially telling you that if they lose the election, then he is going to deny that they lost. And just like in 2020, when Trump made things up to to complain about pretending he lost, he won the election, they're going to do the exact same thing this time. Which is why it's even more important to ensure that the popular vote differences are even greater than usual. Again, reminder, Trump lost the popular vote 2016. And of course, in 2020, he's going to lose it again because most people are not insane. But that isn't how the system works. The system is still the Electoral College. So Democrats have to win that to win the election. But on his point about, you know, these technology companies and they're, they're so, they're so anti-me and anti-Trump. Uh, 
Elon Musk, recent, this is September 26. He suspended a journalist, Ken Klippenstein, who leaked a J.D. Vance doc. So there was a J.D. Vance uh, dossier on him that, that had been leaked, uh, which was from the, the the Trump campaign when they were doing their, their look into J.D. Vance to see if they would pick him as the nominee or as the, as the VP. And X completely suspended the journalist that shared that information. This, which goes to, you know, they complained, oh, Hunter Biden, which I don't know, <laughs> not to go down this road, I still to this day do not understand why anybody would care about Hunter Biden considering he wasn't in government, isn't in government, has nothing to do with anything. He's just Joe Biden's son. So I, I don't, who cares about whatever Hunter Biden did or didn't do? I don't care. Who cares? But they complained that that was censored um, on Twitter. And that was, Twitter was censoring that because there was, there were images of Hunter Biden <laughs> that Hunter did not want out there. That's a different situation than uh, a dossier, a leaked dossier on a person who was running as the VP is an active participant in the actual election and it's information on him. It isn't, you know, leaked private images of him. But this journalist was banned over sharing that doc. Not to mention Elon Musk himself has, uh, as uh, New York Times writes here, relentlessly promoted Trump's candidacy to his 200 plus million followers, has spread conspiracy theories about the Democratic Party and uh, Kamala Harris, and of course has gone on to um, spend millions of dollars through his PAC, which we will get to here, because Elon Musk also stole the America handle on Twitter from someone else who had it, stole it to then use it for his 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 uh, pack, his pro Trump super pack, which is called America Pack, just stole just stole the at America handle and is using actively using his influence to the millions upon millions, uh, hundreds of millions, if not a billion people on Twitter, using his platform to push clearly push Donald Trump. All of this, despite the fact that a couple of years ago, Elon Musk tweeted out, for Twitter to deserve public trust, it must be politically neutral, which effectively means upset in the far right and the far left equally. This clown pretending that he is, you know, some orbiter of truth, some, some uh, centrist individual, just full on endorsing Trump, using his platform to push Trump. It's so disgusting for J.D. Vance to, to pretend that, oh, the, 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 the tech giants are really against us. J.D. Vance is backed by tech money. Peter Thiel is the reason why anyone even knows who J.D. Vance is. Peter Thiel, close friends with Elon Musk, they both founded um, PayPal together. Peter Thiel, a far, far, far right uh, billionaire. So, in the tech sector. So, it's just it's just the disingenuine, disingenuineness, disingenuineness, <laughs> whatever that word is. The total lack of... Uh, uh, any you know morals or any reality uh, in his answer there is it's just it's so disgusting. It's expected, of course, but it's still disgusting. Uh, that said, so that's the link to the the clip there. I'll link that below the video as well. But uh, this is where we get to the polling. So despite how ridiculous these people are, the race is tightening. So Harry Anton here of CNN tweeting out why are Democrats uh, bedwetting. The race is closer than it was three weeks ago in Michigan, Pennsylvania, and Wisconsin. Way too close to call on all three. Also, Harris is doing six points worse on average in them than Biden at this point in 2020. Also, Dems worry more about a Trump presidency than GOP Harris, uh, or GOP about Harris. So I'm going to play just a bit of this briefly just to give you an idea of what's going on and then get to my theory as to what is happening. And it's not a theory as much as it is just the reality because of the shift in the Harris campaign about a month ago. These are, of course, the Great Lake battleground states, the states we've been focusing in on. If Kamala Harris wins these three, she most likely gets to 270 electoral votes. Take a look three weeks ago. Harris was ahead by two in Pennsylvania, two in Wisconsin, three in Michigan. Look at where we are today. The race is even tighter even tighter than it was today. It's a one point advantage in Pennsylvania, one in Wisconsin, one in Michigan. Look, that's limited movement, but in a year in which this race has been so static, if we're talking one point movement, one point movement, two point movements, and we see movements in all three, this is the type of thing 
that at least in the public polling makes Democrats worry. And I think that the public polling in this case is reflected in some of that internal polling, some of that reporting that suggests that these Great Lake battleground states have certainly tightened a lot where at this point they are way too close to call. It is what you call a trend. It is a you trend. See something like this over several states. When you compare this to, to, to four years ago, what does it look like? Yeah, so let's take a look and we're going to look at an average across these three states, right? Michigan, Pennsylvania, and Wisconsin, an average on October 11th. What do you see? Well, if you look eight years ago, Hillary Clinton was way out in front in an average of these three. She was up by eight. You go four years ago, Joe Biden was up by an average of seven points across these three Great Lake battleground states. You come today, it's just a one point advantage for Kamala Harris across these three Great Lake battleground states. So Kamala Harris, at least in the polling, is doing considerably worse than Biden or Clinton. And of course, Clinton lost in all three of these states and Joe Biden barely won in all three of these states. So when you see Harris up by just a point across these three, I think that this is really the type of thing that gets Democrats really to worry, John, because the simple fact is Kamala Harris is doing considerably worse than either Biden or Clinton was. Yeah. All right. So first on Clinton, it's important to remember here that the polling was off back in 2016 for Clinton. They underestimated the level of turnout for typical non-voters for Donald Trump. And that is ultimately what led him to winning that election. People that had no intention of voting then decided to come out to vote for Donald Trump. 2020 was a little closer or a little more accurate in, in the polling. And here, Harris still leading. I do th still think Harris right now is the favorite, but her chances are shrinking. And this was the shift. So I, I tweeted this out. I'm just going to read it since it's easier than just uh, making my point without reading it. So <laughs> here's my tweet. The Harris campaign surged at the beginning when they were clowning Republicans and, a for and had a forceful message of we're not going back. Then about a month ago, they changed strategy by softening the message and campaigning to the right like Hillary in 2016. And look at the result. This is the difference. Now, I can't say that this is, you know, again, this is still a theory because I don't know for sure why the numbers uh, have changed the way they have. I'm sure there's a variety of factors, but I do think this is a big one. The fact that the Harris campaign, when they began, think, think of how different the campaign was. They went on the attack. They were joyful. They were uh, very clear in calling Republicans, or at least Trump and J.D. Vance, weird. That was an ongoing thing. Really positioning them as these, these sort of weirdo outsiders that are so focused on, you know, what you're doing in your bedroom and, and, and uh, wanting to control women's bodies. To now being on the defensive. And now, instead of criticizing them, in fact embracing people like dick cheney <laughs> who's who i gotta say nobody likes republican voters don't like dick cheney i don't know what this who this appeals to what is the idea behind the strategy like so embracing the, the dick cheney endorsement it's one thing for look you can't control who endorses you obviously so he's go he want he's he says he wants to vote for harris okay that's that's a story that that can exist out in the world but her campaign has embraced it has brought it up has thanked him Harris has thanked him for his service. This is a guy that it just the amount of destruction that he has caused throughout the world that the Bush administration have caused. Like it's to think of of how Democrats talked about people like Cheney, you know, just five, eight years ago, compared to what Harris is doing now is wild to uh to witness. And it's not just endorsements like Dick Cheney. It's also just her overall strategy of moving to what they call the center. I'm calling the right because it is moving right. But MSNBC here acknowledging this, what, what to make of Kamala Harris's move to the center. Joe Biden ha had to move to the left after winning the 2020 Democratic primary and went on to win the election. Important to note here, Kamala Harris, according to this writer, doesn't have to do or doesn't have that luxury. What, what luxury? This was the strategy to win. Biden embraced Bernie Sanders, went on to win the election against Donald Trump. Harris is taking on the Hillary Clinton strategy of moving further right, trying to court Republican voters who very little of them have interest in her anyway. And what happened to Hillary Clinton compared to what happened to Joe Biden? One was a failing strategy. The other actually worked. 
So again, this is widely acknowledged. Harris's policy agenda has gaps and ambigu ambiguities as she shifts to the center. That it's just issues like uh, you know minimum wage, childcare, paid leave. These are things that she is not talking about. Now she is talking about you know uh, cost of living. I wish she would talk more about her plan to uh, stop uh, corporate price gouging. Issues like that are incredibly popular. Her new policy that, that she uh, announced this week, but again, has not had much coverage, hasn't been talked about too much, because again, the campaign isn't pushing it too much, but the expansion of Medicare into long-term at-home uh, at care. Policies like that are incredibly popular. That has to be a focus. Less of the Dick Cheney, please. <laughs> More of popular policies and discussing issues like increasing minimum wage, childcare, paid leave. Campaigning to the right has only hurt her. Now, again, I'm, I'm not claiming it's the only thing that has caused the, uh, the race to tighten. There are likely some other factors. Of course, you know, I include this in that, but when it comes to her foreign policy and not moving from where Joe Biden is on that either, I think that's a, a major problem. And that kind of goes hand in hand with embracing someone like Dick Cheney. But ultimately, the issue here is her moving to the center when she simply is losing support in doing so. You will gain uh, especially young voters and people that don't normally vote, they will come out to vote for you if you embrace a winning populist message. 